Okay, we're going to talk now about intensifying screens and film screen combinations. There's several objectives that we're aiming for here, so make sure you read them and make sure you can answer the questions in them. The purpose for intensifying screens, um, we use them to amplify the beam to reduce a patient dose. So the x-rays are converted to light, so 99% of the image comes from this light conversion and 1% of the image comes from the direct interaction between x-rays and the film. Um, good old Edison is the one that discovered using these intensifying screens really reduce patient's dose. So the construction of the intensifying screen, you have the base, you have a reflective layer, a phosphor layer and the protective coat. So here's the base, the reflective layer, phosphor layer, and the protective coating. So the base is a um, polyester plastic. It's about one millimeter thick. It needs to be tough, chemically inert, and flexible. So it provides support and stability for your phosphor layer. The reflective layer, um, it has isotrophic trophic emissions, so a thin layer of magnesium oxide or titanium dioxide. It reflects light um, back to the film. It allows for reduction of patient dose and um, it helps with the loss of image sharpness. So it reflects, reflects light toward the film or absorbing layer. So as you can see here, here's the base and then you have your reflective. This does not have a reflective layer where this has the reflective layer and the phosphor. So, and a protective coating on the other side, and here's the film. So, as you can see, the reflective layer keeps the photons from coming back and exposing the film. So it keeps it so the image is clear. So this is coming right back up and it's gonna expose the film. So we don't want that. So we want to have the reflective layer on there. So the phosphor layer is your active layer of the intensifying screen. Um, it contains crystals that absorb x-rays and give off light, um, absorbs radiation and converts them, converts it to light. So the protective coat is applied over the phosphor layer. Um, it helps with uh, scratches and staining from use, so um, it protects the phosphor layer. So the phosphors, um, the thing that we're looking for is atomic number, conversion efficiency, spectral emissions, luminance, and rare earths, and we're gonna go through each one. So atomic number, the high atomic number is preferred. It increases the likelihood of X-ray photon absorption, but the high atomic number is desirable to increase the probability of an incident X-ray photon interaction. So we're talking about Compton and photoelectric interactions. With your conversion efficiency, it measures the ability of the phosphor to emit light in response to the X-ray stimulation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Measurement indicates screen speed. So increased efficiency decreases patient dose. So the typical conversion efficiency would produce one by 10 to the third white photons per incident. So 50 keV X-ray photon for rare screens. So your spectral emissions, um, Precise wavelength of light emitted by the phosphor, it must match the film's spectral sensitivity. So if you have the two that match, it's going to ensure the maximum latent image formation. If you are not matching in your spectral emissions between your intensifying screen and your film, um, it's going to increase your patient exposure. Luminance, uh, what does that mean? It's the ability of the material to emit light in response to stimulation. There's two types. Uh, fluorescence and phosphorescence. So fluorescence is the instantaneous light is emitted only when exposed to x-rays, where phosphorescence is delayed emissions of light after termination of x-rays. So the phosphorescence, um, as the screens wear, the phosphorescence um, becomes more predominant and um, it gives us an undesirable um, uh, density to the images and it's called screen lag. So sometimes this phosphorescence can last a few minutes um, where the crystals are still um, giving off light and it can expose the next film going into uh, the cassette. So here is luminescence. So you have an x-ray that comes in, you have an electron hole and you have your excited electron up here. And then when it goes back to its normal state, it gives off the light. So phosphors, there's zinc sulfide, 
barium lead sulfide calcium tungstate then there's the rare earth compounds with gadolinium um, lanthanum and yttrium hmm. I don't normally say those so modern phosphor materials is your rare earths is what we use today um, well if we were to use um, film screen is improved over the calcium tungstate because it absorbs uh, better intensification factors higher and the conversion efficiency is better so increase speed without compromising resolution and what that does is it decreases your patient dose so that's important okay so film film is more sensitive to light than x-rays um, that's why we use the intensifying screen so here's an example of one photon causes emissions of a thousand of light photons so one photon can give off thousands of light photons so with your calcium tongue state you have a five percent conversion efficiency where your rare earths your 15 to 20 conversion efficiency and you can see on the graph here with kvp and the intensification factor that rare earth is a lot more sensitive without losing any of our uh, detail there so here's another example if we have 10 mas coming in um, we have a thousand x-rays coming out with a hundred speed we're at 10 so here's five five hundred and we're at the same amount 10 coming out so this is rare earth and this is calcium tungstate so characteristics so is the resolution we're going to look at the measurements the film screen contact quantum model speed and contrast and latitude Resolution is the ability of the imaging system to accurately image an object. So inversely related to phosphor size, thickness of the phosphor layer, concentration or packing density of the crystals, um, uh, exactly as silver highlight size and distribution affect film resolution. So looking here, as you can see, we have your layer thickness on how thick the layer is, your phosphor layer. So it comes in, you can see it's real thin, so we've got an accurate image. Where we have the thicker, it's going to be wider, it's kind of divergent. So with the phosphor size, if we have a small phosphor size, we're going to have a better image. Where if we have a larger phosphor size, as you can see, it's spread out over a larger area, giving us some distortion. So resolution is measured in line pairs per millimeter. So the minimum size and space between the object can be visualized. The naked eye can resolve about 10 to 20 line pairs per millimeter. So non-screen film is about 100 line pairs per millimeter. Detailed speed screen is about 15. Par screen about 10 and high speed about 7. So as you can see we're, we're really losing a lot of resolution as we go into these high speed the par speed, yes, we start to lose it. The detailed, we can see the difference between them, de definitely. So line spread function is the ability of the system to accurately represent borders of an object. So here gives you an idea of line pairs per millimeter. So film screen contact. Um, most common screen resolution problems, so poor screen contact of film in the intensifier screen in the cassette decreases the image density in that area. There are many causes. There's foreign objects, um, warped uh, screens, damaged cassettes, and um, you can see here how this works. So you have um, your intensifying screen that's not touching your film as it comes up. You can see how it is distorted. So we're going to have a lighter film and um, an image that is not accurate. So here's an example. You can see where it's touching and where it's not. So factors that influence uh, speed, so your phosphor, your size, your layer thickness, and your concentration. Increasing your phosphor size and your layer thickness increases the speed. Um, it, increasing phosphor thickness increases your speed. So the other thing that we really haven't touched on is KVP. As KVP is increased, the efficiency of the intensifier screens increase um, also. So um, we'll touch on that in your 121 class. As the temperatures increase, um, if you go above 100 degrees, um, it will decrease the speed significantly. So you need to be careful and make sure your department is air conditioned. Intensifying uh, screen speeds also refer to the amount of light emitted by a given amount of x-ray exposure. It can be measured in three ways. So the intensification factor, the relative speed, and the name of the speed of the screen. So 
intensification factors related to the conversion efficiency of the phosphor. So intensification factor is exposure required without the screen over exposure required with the screen. So uh, relatively screen numbers. So we have parse, parse speed, which is 100, high speed, 100 to 1200, fine detail is 20 to 80. So um, image intensifying screens resolution. We have two types of resolution measured with intensifying screens. We have contrast and spatial. So um, contrast resolution is the ability of an imaging system to distinguish structures with similar x-ray transmissions to separate entities affected by sensitivity of the image receptor and amount of noise. So the quantum model can be measured by either signal to noise ratio or contrast to noise ratio. So digital imaging has superior uh, contrast resolution to analog. So spatial resolution, the ability of an imaging system to create separate images of closely spaced objects, most often measured by spatial frequency, uh, given in units of line pairs per millimeter, what we talked about already. So your um, spatial resolution, so you, your modulation uh, transfer function can also be used to measure spatial frequency. We've talked about that before, and we'll talk about it again in 121. So your numbers from 0 to 1 are obtained. The closer to the number 1, the better spatial resolution. Your goal is always to be at 1. So uh, beam absorption and with your screens. Calcium tungstate absorbs about 20 to 40 percent of the beam, where rare earths um, absorb 50 to 60 percent of the beam. So your K shell absorption edge, um, it's important you actually know what that means. When the incident X-ray photon matches the K-shell binding energy of the phosphor, there's a dramatic increase in the characteristic production with the screen. So read this in, um, in Carlton. Uh, he has a whole section on the K-edge absorption. So film screen combinations designed to complement with each other. So screens are de designed to emit a specific wavelength films designed to have a sensitivity to the same wavelength. So that's where we talked about it's important that you have the same match. So contrast um, primarily determined by the film. So KVP plays a major role in contrast. When we deal with digital, um, it's not the same. So rare earth uh, phosphors exhibit contrast. So um, there's crossover dyes that help, um, but primarily with film base and emulsion. So um, that's the contrast is primarily with the base and the emulsion and KVP plays a big role with that. Your latitude um, is primarily determined by the film. It's inversely related to contrast. So high scale contrast has a narrow latitude. So it talks about how steep the line is on the H and D curve. So if you have um, narrow latitude, it's gonna be real steep. If you have low contrast, it's gonna be a long lazy line um, going across a so wide latitude. So concerns that we have, three primary characteristics of radiographic intensifying screens. So screen speed, image noise, and spatial resolution. So um, cassette holders, they need to be portable, light proof. Um, we're going to talk about the characteristics and care. So the front of the cassette must be uniformly radiolucent. Um, it's usually graphic fiber. Uh, rigid to provide good support for body parts. It needs to be lightweight. The back also needs to be um, rigid. There's in the inside. There's foam um, to help keep the pressure against the film. So there's good film screen contact. Um, when you're loading, so don't fully open the cassette. You're just going to open it a little bit, pull the film out, and then load it again uh, to keep dust out. And you're going to store the cassettes on end so you don't lay them flat wide open. And the back is lead line to absorb backscatter. What is backscatter? It's caused when the incident beam of such a magnitude that is enough backscatter to produce from behind the cassette to form a second image. So it goes all the way through and bounces back. So single versus double emulsion cassettes. I wanted to show you how this is single emulsion coming through. This is double emulsion. It's on both sides. And screen conditioning, um, screens must be kept free of dirt, stains, and defects. Requires regular cleaning at least every six months, um, sometimes more, depends on how busy your department is. And you inspect during that time uh, and make sure that um, there's no scratches or anything. If there's any defects, you need to pull the cassette out of, out of practice. 